the first of the century to be honest. So, um, I mean, I love Bach, but uh, it's not what I'm here to talk about. So imagine if I told you this, right? So I, you know, I, I don't play the, the fiddle, but what if I told you that uh, some days ago I wanted to play? I, I grabbed a fiddle, right? And I started to play Press for Time. No Press for Time. Super. I love Press for Time. But I don't play the fiddle, so it didn't work. I tried, but no, I couldn't find the note. So I just said, maybe it buy me for me, and I never tried again. Doesn't make any sense for you to just pick up an instrument and try immediately, and you're frustrated. Yeah, but then, does it make sense for you, the fact that I said, I'm not good enough for this and I never try again because my first tune that I ever tried was press for time. It's a bit of imbalance, you know. It's a bit similar when we start writing music. We all have our favorite tunes ever. We have such a wide spectrum of music that we love. And of course we want to write music as good as that one, right? But maybe the first tune you write, the first melody, won't be as good as that. It takes some time. You know, practice, just the way you practice an instrument, you practice your writing, become better, you get some tricks here and there, you take this, you use it there, and then you listen to a great tune by Brian Finney and you say, that's the idea I want to copy. And you listen to a great tune by Andy, and then you say, oh, that's another thing that I want to copy. But maybe slightly different, and that's music, that's how we develop. Uh, so this week uh, I'm, I was very glad to help some of you into this uh, wonderful journey that is creating music and I hope you all get inspired and you all start writing more and more and uh, I felt a little bit like, like Santa, you know, it's, uh, at least oh, I want to tune in, yeah, in uh, whatever instrument, in whatever key, with all the rhythms and yeah, well, I try to fulfill them all uh, so, so far I've only written about six or seven, sorry um, but because uh, I feel like Santa, I promise that by Christmas all the tunes will be written. <laughs> Hopefully with all the requests you made, I just wrote one uh, in A minor and I checked the list and it says D major or G major. <laughs> said, well, it's kind of close but it's not really the same. <laughs> So I might just transpose it into B flat and that will be the tune for the people, for the person who asked me one in B flat. You never know. Those those kind of tricks are very common. So I've been very delighted to, to help you. And uh, we're going to play one of the compositions that I wrote this week. Uh, it was uh, the, the mo at, at the moment, <laughs> at that moment, uh, when the person who wanted it wrote it, was uh, the most curious and peculiar <laughs> request. <laughs> this person has something, something with the number five. So she said, I want five flats. And five four, and uh, so I wrote it also with five bars each section. <laughs> so I really like five high five. Oh, <laughs> oh, I never so, asked him if I knew I was going to have to play it in front of you. <laughs> I convinced her today to do it, and uh, I will pretend that I will I know it and I will play something with it. Um, but you are the, the the shining star tonight, and I will join you. <laughs> World premiere. No pressure. No camera. Oh yeah, one camera. One, <laughs> one audience. Two pressure. Five flat. Five pressure. <laughs> If you're worried about making any mistakes, don't worry, I'll make one mistake for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That, that's, yeah, it's done. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. The next tune we're going to play, and the last for tonight, for me and for you, is because he's joining me again. It's a waltz that I wrote for my grandfather, late uh, grandfather and grandmother. Um, they used to be very near from where I live now, um, in a hill. Well, in, in where I come from, Valparaiso, is full of hills. It's about 40 hills. And the whole city is based on the mountain. The, the, the part that is not the hills is very, very small, the plain. Um, so basically the whole city life is in the hills. It's very special, so you can see houses all the time, you see the roofs, and it's like a big community that is watching all the time, <laughs> doing, in, a, in all senses. But uh, yeah, so they live in a hill called Bella Vista, which means uh, literally beautiful view, Bella Vista. So oh, this is my wall for them. You want me to make another mistake for you? <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just tell you, we've run through this three times, I have to sight read it. Um, quarter to six. And it's got four flats. <laughs> That's only four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three negative. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 I can't remember very well. But you will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 